Oh, well, hello there, Bob. Oh, hello. Uh, this is Bob Fixit. Um, I know we have a very echoey studio because this is the top of a Cape Cod house. And if you've ever lived in a Cape Cod house, you'll understand why I'm good at fixing things. There's plenty to fix in this house. So what I'm going to show is the procedure for replacing the bearing. That's the vibratory mechanism. Got your two bearings. Um, this is uh, a jaw puller. This is a jaw puller. They're inexpensive. So the problem, as we saw last time, was you can't really, can't really get the jaws to engage this thing because the plate's in the way. That's a problem. So what I decided to do was take apart this one and make a tool that will allow me to pull it through. So just missing the bolts. It's kind of like assembling an erector set, it's just bolts and plates. Stick this thing in here. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. Uh, pinch the shaft in between these these plates and just you know, tighten the bolts. It's never as easy as it looks. There. So then, if I push on the center of that shaft, it should pop out. So I push on it with this thing. The other jaw puller. That should work. Usually you need a wrench, but I guess these snaps aren't very tight. And then I needed this thing, this ubiquitous little uh, wire connector to get it to engage. There we go. Is this content that people will click on? I think it needs to happen faster. Anyway, so you just pop the bearing off. Yeah, so that's where the bearing went. That's the one I just took off. Let me put that one back on. It has slightly lower rolling resistance. God, it's so smooth though. These apparently are the bearings that are used in skateboard wheels. These are the sealed ones. These brown things, I guess, are like the seals that keep the grease in. But they oh. have more rolling resistance because of it. Anyway, so I'm going to shove this thing back on that shaft. Just push it down. So that's how you get the bearing on. I guess it's not that tight. Yeah. So that's flush. Put the, uh, the rubber bushings. Anyway. There. It makes sense actually to put the sealed one here and the non-sealed one here because if moisture gets in, it's coming in from this side. So, let's going to put those back in. What you had was a spring that had two different diameters. And I don't know if that's how it was before it was installed or if it plastically deformed after the installation procedure. I think now I'm going to have to design a tool to press fit that spring onto the shaft. Like some kind of tube, some kind of guide tube. Water can get in here, like the spring, this neck here is a spring, and yeah. water can get right through it, which is why there's this plastic cover, but it doesn't work that well. So a better waterproofing method would be, would be good. That's today's video. Um,